Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show on this Tuesday evening. I'm Peter Martin. Thank you very much for tuning in to the show. Alan Ruff and Alison McConnell of the Herald and Times join me on the programme tonight. And here's what we were discussing. Yeah, lots to get our teeth into before we talk about that quarterfinal draw in the uh, Scottish Cup. Let's deal with some disciplinary matters just to get them out of the way, Ruffy. Um, Alan McGregor's decision uh, on whether he's uh, uh, going to get the two-match ban uh, will be heard tomorrow, obviously. Uh, there's an appeal in there. Alan Power, no retrospective action uh, from today's hearing. Um, Paul McGinn also remains a yellow, but Darnell Johnson from Hebs has picked up uh, a two-match ban. His appeal was rejected. Yeah, I think that one in particular, you know, I think uh, it had to be rejected. I think there was, uh, it could have been nasty, you know. I, I think the boy got caught in releasing the ball and then he couldn't get out of it. So I don't think he's got any problems there. I think the Alan McGregor one, they're going to really... Uh, find it difficult to prove that he actually meant it you know his leg was out there you can't take that away it's there for everybody to see but I mean I think it was a player it ran into him yeah. you know Alan McGregor is the only one that'll tell you his motive behind it but yeah does he really uh, have to be does it really have to be proved that he meant it though I mean from my point of view I'm looking at it as an incident where they will look at it and say his actions could have caused you know, a, a, a bad injury to, you know, Lewis Ferguson. I think that's the cold light of day. You'll never really justify, you'll never be able to actually clarify whether somebody's intent is there. I suppose Alan would know more than me, but I think goalkeepers are probably always told to come out yeah, with yeah. Uh, their, their knees out and legs mm -hmm. flying if there's a, an attacker coming straight at you. But I did think his leg was quite high. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't, I'm with you on the, the issue of intent. How do you actually prove that he meant to, to harm or when he could harm. I really don't know what the <coughs> what the situation would be with regard to that, but I think on, on viewing, I think it could well be upheld. Yeah, the other thing about it as well, and this is only a personal opinion, but I, but I think you lot are overprotected. I mean, I'm, I'm looking, I mean, even as early as last night, uh, we're looking at the late goal that Wolves equalised against Newcastle. Rafa Benitez peeved that his team uh, dropped a couple of points, but the goal keeper was nowhere near it. You know, he, he should have punched <coughs> the ball clear. The guy heads it into the back of the net. I mean, I think you're overprotected, Ruffy, but I also think some of the goalkeepers are guilty of, you know, coming out and could do serious damage. Yeah, I, I agree with you in the first part. You know, there are some goalkeepers out there who come into a crowd of players and, and go for the foul because they know that a referee, for whatever reason, if there's any contact whatsoever, it's you get the advantage. I agree with you there. Uh, but, I mean, we've had a certain occasions when players have come out and wiped out players, you know, and I think that's more serious than, yeah. than what Alan McGregor did. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I'm reading your mind there. The, the name in my head, Ruffy, and I wonder if it's the same name as yours, but I'm thinking Harold Schumacher. Oh. Uh, is that the one you're thinking of in yeah, 1982? Well, I uh, always remember him taking out B uh, Batistone of France. Yeah, I think you can see right for the start that was his main objective in that one. You know, That's why, if I go back to the Alan McGregor one, I, I just think he had the ball in his hand and then his leg goes out and the player's coming in. I mean, the player could have jumped out the road or whatever, but he just went into it. Yeah, well, we're going to stick with goalkeepers, but on a, a rather sad note, uh, sadly, uh, it was announced today that Gordon Banks, England's legendary goalkeeper, has uh, passed away at the age of 81. Uh, for me, growing up as a boy, Ruffy, you know, Gordon Banks was world class. I thought he conducted himself immaculately, especially in interviews. He was everything, actually, you could want in a goalkeeper. You know, FIFA's goalie of the year six times, World Cup winner. Uh, I think he won the League Cup with Stoke and Leicester. Today, if he was being sold as a goalkeeper, Ruffy, he wouldn't have been at Stoke and Leicester. No disrespect to them, but he was just, he was top drawer. I mean, the save against Pelly was out outrageous. 
Yeah, he was the original goalkeeper that everybody wanted to be, you know, of that era. You know, he was obviously an era behind me, but he obviously, you remember the games that he played in. I, I was, you mentioned the save. I was fortunate enough to meet him at a dinner and I asked him about the save and everything. And, and like he was, you know, he said, I've made tons of saves better than that, you know. <laughs> You know, but it's because where it was and who it was against, yeah. Pele, you know, it was a World Cup and, and that's what he's always remembered for. But he, he was so he, he, he was so quiet, and, you know, and, and to have done everything that he had done in the game, you know. And, and do you know that he played 73 times for England and he only got beat nine times? It's not a bad record. You know, that, it. that's, that's absolutely incredible. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I think I was listening before I come in to everybody who, not even people who had played with him, people who just knew him, you know, and stuff of the stuff that was coming through was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, when Pelly puts a tweet out, you know uh, that it's somebody of the highest order. Goalkeeping has changed a lot since Gordon and I played, but if you were playing today, you would still be one of the very best. Rest in peace, my friend. Uh, and uh, Pelly there just showing uh, the regard he has for Gordon Banks, who sadly passed away at the age of 81. OK, uh, now, what about that uh, game last night? I, I know Robbo, he'll be, <laughs> he'll be going into a darkened room and thumping his head off a wall. Ross County were out. All Inverness needed to do was... They could have kicked a ball to the Tullock Stadium see when they were out. through. Just see it out. That's all we want at, at that stage, is just to, to see it out. I can imagine he would be apoplectic at the, at the nature of the goal, the timing of it. All of it, it's just so frustrating for them. And of course, that's, you've got it all to do again. Yeah, right. I, I'll tell you one thing, Ali, I, I, I thought there was good goals in it. It was a really good, it was a good game to watch. Yeah, it's a derby goal. You're always kind of hoping for something, aren't you? Just a bit of spice. And, and, a, and quite often, though, in a case like that, when there's so much build up, it can fall flat when you've got the live TV game. You're always hoping it lives up to the stage it's on. But no, I thought it, it was a, a good game. And I actually thought it was a good idea then to put it on on, on the Monday night and screen it when you know it's getting an almost captive audience in terms of there were no other games on on, on local telly last night. It was a chance for people to actually see it and, and enjoy it. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's a good thing about it. It's a good point <coughs> you make, actually. You know, more often than not, you, you're at ridiculous times on a Saturday or a Sunday to try and catch them, Ruffy. Yeah, I think the, the, the both sets of supporters bought into that game. It was a good atmosphere up there. Uh, you're right, the goals were, were very, very good. But I, I'm like you as well, with two minutes to go to extra time. And when that ball came hurling through the air, I couldn't believe they were two for two at the back. You know, it should have been at least five defenders there marking the two. And it was interesting that a reporter wanted the interview with Robbo right after the game. And they said, no way, no way. I go near him for at least 15, 20 minutes because he'd have been absolutely livid with that. Yeah. Uh, strangely enough, uh, I mean, he'd love <clears> a, a run in the cup. Inverness will forever be linked with that Scottish Cup win under John Hughes. They like a good cup run. I think they would swap it all if either one of them could get back up this season. I think it must be a huge loss for them. Uh, when you think of the revenue that comes from being in the top flight, it's a huge jump to take. When you go down, the level of exposure, I think, just disappears. I think when you don't have the the weekly updates that you're getting and, and you don't have the, the big profile games, high profile games that you're getting against Aberdeen and Celtic and Rangers when you're out the top flight and it's such a competitive league to come out of and, and get back up again. For to my great shame for some of us who travelled up to the Highlands, it's maybe yeah. not a bad thing not to be going to Ross County on a Wednesday yeah. night. Well, let me, but, let, uh, let me tell you this, Ali. <laughs> <clears throat> the ultimate, you might think it's a, a trek and a half. Ruffy and I had to suffer a full journey up to Inverness one night with Gordon Smith in the car. <laughs> and boy, that was the longest journey we've ever experienced, Ruffy. Yeah, we have to, have to add the journey back home again. <laughs> yeah. One way. <laughs> uh, the one thing I would say about Inverness, though, it's still great, great for nightlife and uh, uh, more than a few friends up there. It, listen, we'll talk about the, the, the draw in detail, but nevertheless, they still think you're looking at it and they've got a chance to get to the semi-final either of those sides because they've got Dundee United in the next round. Well, absolutely. I mean, you would, you'd be hard-pressed to pick between them, wouldn't you? You really would. You would think uh, you think they would... Whoever goes through from this tie, I think you would fancy their chances. Yeah. Who's your money on? Inverness. Ruffy, what are you going for? I, I was Ross County last night. I thought that they won, not comfortably, but won the game. I, I'm still going to hang on in there with them. 
Yeah, OK, I'll stick with you, Ali, because, um, well, it's not really being objective. It's just uh, Robbo's my pal and I'm thinking, <laughs> well, <laughs> let's hope they get through. I know Roy McGregor will give me belters. Um, OK, uh, we're going to look at the draw in more detail. We're going to look also at Celtic uh, and their match against Valencia. Is there a real chance uh, for Celtic to get into the next round of the Europa League? And let's not forget, it's Champions League football to look forward to as well. It is back. Can Ole Gunnar Solskjaer continue his run with with Man United unbeaten in 11. It's all to discuss. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. If you have just joined us, the main news with regards to the disciplinary hearings, Daniel Johnson's picked up a two-game ban. Alan McGregor's uh, hearing will be tomorrow now at the request of Rangers. It's been delayed 24 hours. Uh, elsewhere, Alan Power does not uh, get any ban for that uh, kick at uh, Ryan Jack. And also over and above that, uh, Paul McGinn's challenge uh, remains a yellow. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm sure uh, there'll be a few angry managers, players, you know, uh, I think, you know, we've been talking about it constantly, referees, decisions, and then retrospectively looking for other people to be banned, Ali. There will be an outcry at this over the next 24 hours. Well, it's nothing new, is it? In Scottish football, I feel as though all we've done all season is talk about decisions and refereeing decisions or lack of decisions. Uh, and I think there's the, the big issue for most people has been the lack of consistency in applying the rules and the lack of consistency in just keeping things across the board and, and, and maintaining a certain standard. I think that's been the biggest downfall all season. Yeah, certainly not helping the fans and uh, uh, every programme that you could think of now, everybody's got an opinion on it. Um, OK, let's look at the quarterfinal draw in full. We had a look at uh, Ross County Inverness, who now know that they've got a chance to play at Tannadice against Dundee United. No doubt about it, Ruffy. I mean, you're looking at uh, <coughs> two games there that I think really scream out of uh, at us, which is Aberdeen against Kilmarnock Rangers and Hibs against Celtic. Let me quickly get your thoughts on Partick Thistle at home against Hearts. I know you wanted a big team, but uh, are you looking at that and thinking uh, this no, could be a semi-final? No, and I think the draw comes out. You just want a home, a home game. You know, you want a home game for the football side, but from the financial side. You want a big game yeah. away against one of the bigger sides, but the way it's come out, it's home advantage. You know we are on a, a decent run just now. Obviously, we're playing uh, against a team from a higher division, so it'll be a tough, tough game for us. Yeah, uh, well, that's the bog standard answer, yeah. which I could have taken from you from uh, the show six years ago. Uh, did you look at the draw and say Partick Thistle against Hearts? Yes. <laughs> 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 Not sort of a yes, your answer. Here we go. But no, I think from the players' point of view, the manager, the supporters, you want to play against a big side. I'm sure Hearts will bring a big, big uh, fan base to that game. I think the stadium will be bouncing. I know, right? You'll push them on it. I think we've got a chance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got to drag it out of them, Ali. You don't get it just first time around. You know, you got to punch them into it. Um, you know, at home, I actually agree with them. I think you know now that Gary's starting to get. The, the, the Thistle player's in a zone, he's got the players that he wants, maybe not all of them, but he's certainly got a good few playing the way he wants. I think it's still a hard ask, I'd be honest and say that I think it is still quite a formidable, a formidable task for them to overcome them. However, what you would say is hearts have been very erratic this season too. You never really know what you're going to get. Uh, the fact it's a home game, it's a cup game, it's a one-off you never know. Yeah. You, no, no one ever knows. So you've got to go and approach it with a positive mindset. You've got to go and think that you're capable of, of getting there. And you're right. You're like one game away from the the semi final. Yeah. Uh, you've got to go and have a go at least. I think. Okay, I, I like the answers from you too. Um, it's hearts for me in the next round. By the way, <laughs> uh, punditry. It depends what way you want it. Um, the next one, Aberdeen, Kilmarnock, <clears throat> Rangers. Now, when this came out of it, I'm looking and thinking to myself. This is a cracker because I think Kilmarnock have blown it mm -hmm. and I think Aberdeen and Rangers is the tie. Yeah, I would think so. I think you would look at it and think if, that, if Kilmarnock were going to do anything that was going to be at Rugby Park, uh, you would anticipate that Rangers would overcome them at Ibrox. However, again, I, I'm not sure it's quite as simplistic as that. Again, it's a cup tie. It's a one-off. They've already done 
particularly well everywhere they've, they've gone. Come on, not get both Ibrox and, and at Celtic Park this season. I wouldn't write them off just yet, but you would expect that Rangers would prevail over that one. Uh, and it's it's a fantastic tie. Petordry game, uh, the history that goes on between the two clubs, the recent history, the, the bad blood that's spilling out from the game last week, taking that back into it, I think it would be all eyes on on Petordry for it. Yeah, yeah. I'm writing yeah. Kilmarnock well, off. Well, I'm just going to say that I thought you'd learned your lesson for the Hibs Hearts game. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, coming no. out with no, no. No, coming no, no. out with Kilmarnock have blown it. No, no. Falls into that category. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's, here's the situation. Here's the situation, right? And I, I don't need to explain this a million times, but nevertheless, I am I, I am affected by the Hibs fans who give me pelters every February <laughs> for that game. And it, I don't do it any. I, I actually, I, I'm a little bit reluctant to do it, Ali. But if there's a game on and there's the games going from one end to the other, I I try not to tweet on the game, because what happened is Hearts are two nothing up at Tyne Castle <laughs> in the Scottish Cup, and I just innocently went game over two 0 to the Jambos. <laughs> the wait goes on for the heavies. Now they equalise, <laughs> they win the game, they win the Scottish <laughs> Cup, and they gave me pelters. Hopefully me still are. <laughs> yeah, I'm, and they're still doing it. Honestly, the retweets is outrageous. I think Kilmarnock have come into that Carthy, Gary. No, they're I'm just it. saying, I, I think they've blown but it. If they went on to win the cup... Uh, well, think... <laughs> if they went on to win the cup, people, teams would be phoning me up and saying, listen, <laughs> is there any chance you can well at us as well? But I, I think that's the game, Aberdeen Rangers, because if ever there's an incentive <clears throat> for the Dons uh, to try and get a bit of revenge, and Rangers, I think, will look at that and say, confidence... You know, sky high, albeit they drew a blank against Kilmarnock. But I think if if they've got the their best players on the pitch, you know, Rangers will look and say we can take them at Petodre. We've done it before. It's, it's such a, a great game. The other one is for me. I think it's too early for Hibs to even think about. Posing I think Celtic are going through the gears now. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, Celtic seem to have stepped up a bit since they came back from Dubai. There just seems a, bit, a, a wee bit more tempo about their play, a bit of fluency. I think that's 21 goals they've scored in seven games, they've not conceded any. They look much more cohesive than what they did uh, in that run in December. I think they look like a different team. Again, I think Easter Road has been tricky. For Celtic, I think it's been a, a difficult ground, but it's here where you maybe question how much would you attribute that to the to Neil Lennon and he's getting his players up for the game, his tactical awareness of, of knowing how he wanted to play. This is perhaps where you see it. I think they're a club just now where there's there's still a hangover from what went on between Neil and how he left the club. Uh, I don't know that that dissipates almost immediately. Uh, so you'll see the effect maybe in, in the next few weeks. But I, I don't think it would be straightforward for Celtic. I would expect them to come out of it and I'd expect them to win it. But I think that might be the hardest game that they've had since coming back. Obviously, excusing Thursday night against Valencia and then Kilmarnock on, on Sunday. But that's one of the hardest games that they'll have since, since coming back. Yeah, OK. Um, uh, just before we move off that topic then, since you're here, <clears throat> I might as well give you uh, a chance to get pelters on social media. I get uh, plenty of that, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to go, I, I, I'm going to go Rangers um, and then, I, then I'm going to go Hearts. Celtic, sorry, Rafi. Rangers, Hearts, Celtic, and of the Dundee United, Ross County, Inverness. I'm, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for, I'm gonna go for Dundee United. What about okay. yourself? I'm gonna go for Aberdeen to prove, to come out of that tie. I think Rangers will beat Kilmarnock. I think Aberdeen will win the tie. I fancy Inverness if they beat Ross County to beat Dundee United. Fancy hearts, I'm afraid, Ruffy. Yeah, don't, don't uh, worry. Hill. He's been leathered and, before. And uh, Celtic at Easter Road. Ruffy? Uh, if Rangers beat Kilmarnock, uh, I think they'll beat Aberdeen. Uh, I think Celtic will beat Hibs. Uh, and I think Dundee United will beat either of the two, the Highland League sides. And uh, the Thistle game is a hard one to call. Yeah, yeah. But call it. <laughs> Go on. I think a draw. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, go away and uh, take the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK. I actually <laughs> think that game at Petordry if Rangers do go through, that's the hardest tie they could have got out with oh. a going to Celtic Park. Yeah. There, there's not a harder game. 
Yeah, I agree they, with they, you, but you've talk. picked Aberdeen. Don't go back yes. on it. <laughs> uh, don't try and dig yourself out of a hole. Just get ready for the next two or three days. Um, just out of curiosity, I, I, Alex McLeish has come out and said that, you know, it's Kazakhstan, it's San Marino, but he wants the key players there. You know, some people, and I think it's rather rude and ill-informed to suggest that it's a jolly for them on these two games. I think this is crucial to Alex McLeish getting <clears throat> a team of players together and a, and a good squad of players now that could maybe build up the confidence and give him a settled level in his mind. I think there, you know, there are so many players there I think he's got to take there. No, I think it's good. I think he's laying the ground rules, uh, what happened before, players calling off, and then we're all going to make our mind up. Do they really want to play for us? Or do they want to play club football? I know it's going to be difficult for a couple of teams, Celtic in particular. Are, play, are they playing that day that they're thinking about leaving to go to Kyrgyzstan? And the amount of Celtic players in that... And that game that they're going to play could get injured, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yep, OK. It's uh, one of those ones you can give us your own opinion on, on social media as well, on uh, YouTube, Facebook and, of course, Twitter. Thanks to Alison. Uh, we will put her uh, Twitter handle up later on for everybody who realised she's picked Aberdeen <laughs> <laughs> to, to win that quarterfinal tie. Let the battle commence. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.